the first thing that you should do is ask yourself, why do you actually want to learn web design? The way I see it is you have two different options. The first one is you are passionate about it and you want to get better at the actual design part of things. You want to hone your craft and you really care about it like an artist cares about his or her drawings. And the second option is you want to build a long-standing business based around your web design. You certainly could do both things. However, the path to get there is going to be different for each. I'm going to talk about both and I'm going to share with you which path I took, how I got my first full-time job in this space. And then I'll share with you how I was able to eventually grow it to 10 and then even $20,000 per month, sell everything and start traveling full-time. So if you've view this as an art like most web designers do, then you are going to have to learn code. I'm talking HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You'll probably need to learn some PHP as well. And the best way to do this is on places like this, YouTube, watching free tutorials. But beyond that, I would suggest that you would go on Udemy and you would actually pay for courses because not only will they go more in depth, but it'll give you a nice structure that you can follow to actually hone in your skills and your craft. Then you'll also need to learn how WordPress works, Webflow, Figma, Theme Forest, and these are just a couple tools that are going to aid you in your web design journey. And you'll really need to put in the time to study these different tools, put in the effort, the energy required to build sample projects and build up your portfolio before you go out and start applying to different jobs. I got my first job as a web designer because I just had a huge list of projects of websites that I built literally for myself. They were just sample projects. I put them all on one website and that got me a senior web designer slash developer position. I needed to handwrite code and I still landed that job and I was completely self-taught. And on top of that, they actually gave me a higher salary than what I initially expected. The second path is to become a freelancer and then eventually evolve into a business owner because freelancing will only really get you so far. And there's a ton of pros and cons to both of these. But honestly, I think if you start as a freelancer, it's going to be much harder harder because there's so many different skills that you have to learn outside of web design. You're effectively starting your own business. Now, even though it's a business of one, you still have to learn marketing. You have to learn sales. You have to learn some copywriting. You have to learn client management. You have to learn all these skills that you just maybe didn't even sign up for or you didn't expect to learn. And honestly, if all you want to do is just sit and design websites all day, every single day, you're better off working a job, but you are missing out on a ton of reoccurring revenue if you build your own freelancing business. The cool thing is I built websites for my freelance clients five plus years ago, and they have been paying me over a hundred dollars per month for hosting ever since then. So if you think about it, they paid me the upfront fee of thousands of dollars. So I put in the work, the effort, the energy that was needed to build it. And still to this point, they've paid me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars ever since. And all I have to do is update a couple photos every couple months or every quarter. And by the way, I don't actually do that myself. I have an assistant that does all of that for me. I think if you are working at a job, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to get to that six figure mark without doing heavy, heavy code. So be aware that just because you're a good designer, maybe you won't enjoy the code and the programming aspect of your web design slash web development. Now, if you want to get to $10,000 a month, $15,000 per month, you're going to have to work at a very, very big company. You're probably going to have to live in a place like San Francisco and work for one of these startups and dedicate a whole bunch of time driving to work, sitting in a cubicle, sitting in traffic and everything else that comes with having a job. So now that we have both categories established, you're probably leaning towards one versus the other. Now, the cool thing is if you want to get good at either one of them, you're going to have to follow a similar plan for both. So the first piece of advice I have for you is you need to go to Theme Forest and study all of the most popular website templates. You literally have a tool that will categorize websites and give you the ratings, give you the reviews on what other people like. The way to design websites, the way to build these websites is to give people what they want. 
And if you go to this tool right here, you will see what people really enjoy. And what I want you to do is click into those websites and just start studying them. Why do people really love this theme? Start reading the different comments. Start to understand why do people even like websites in general? What are they getting out of it? Even Pablo Picasso said, good artists borrow and great artists steal. Now, I'm certainly not encouraging you to steal these different websites, but remember, a lot of them are for sale. So what you could do is build on top of these templates. But also what I want to mention is if you take a look at the top 10 website design templates and you just dissect them and you take your favorite parts from each one of these templates and put them all together into one template, that also fits your client or fits the person that you are working with, that is going to be unique. Even though you did not sit down with a pen and paper and just jot down and draw the whole website yourself, that's fine. It doesn't have to be 100% unique. Take all the best principles, take all of your favorite features on all these different templates and put them into one. Maybe you like the header on this website. Maybe you like how this one has a nice layout. Maybe you like the footer on this template. Put it together, adjust it to the client, make sure it fits their needs, and now you have a beautiful website that's still unique because you created it and you put it together. And by the way, even at this point, if you think that your websites are so unique, you're probably wrong. Because if you look at all the websites that are out on the internet, all the different business owners, all the different freelancers, chances are, even if you drew up a website from scratch, there's probably another one in the world somewhere. You might not know about it, but it exists. Someone already did something similar. You're not going to sit here and just reinvent the wheel completely. Take what works and build on top of it and understand it's going to be very, very difficult to be unique at all. Charlie Parker, who is a famous musician, once said that first you must learn the instrument, then you must learn the music, and then you forget all that shit and just play. And that's exactly what I want you to do with all these different web design templates that you're going to start with, which leads into the next point that I have for you. The best way to learn anything is just by doing it. Start working with clients ASAP. Fine, build up your portfolio, but actually go out and talk to people. Give them your website design ideas. Build them homepages, build them entire websites and get their feedback. In the beginning, chances are your clients might even start walking all over you because they're going to ask you for these changes, this, changes there, changes everywhere on the website, even if it makes the design look worse. I've had clients give me updates and then literally tell me that it looks worse and then I had to revert it and change it back. In the beginning, that's fine. And you're going to learn how to establish boundaries. And then in the future, you'll know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Because a lot of times, if a client asks for it, doesn't mean that it's actually the best thing for their business. So don't obsess about being this perfect web designer and getting everything right the first time. Go out there and start freaking building. You can give your clients an offer that they can't refuse. Tell them you're going to give them the first revision for free and then they can ask for a refund. Or maybe if you're brand new, you can even tell them you'll build the whole site for them. They they do have to pay half up front. But then if they don't like it for whatever reason, you'll send them a refund. That way you're getting practice, you're making some money. And then the worst case scenario, you just got practice and you didn't really make money, but it's still a good website to add to your portfolio. And this will give you real-time feedback on what clients want to see, on what clients think look nice, and what they actually enjoy seeing visually. Because at the end of the day, if you love your websites and you try to sell them and your clients just don't like them, then guess what? It doesn't matter. They're not going to want to pay for it. And that's the interesting thing. It's not about you. A lot of these designers make it all about themselves when really it's about the market. It's about other people. We are not drawing a painting and instilling our life views and visions into this painting and then letting anyone look at it and then whoever wants to buy it, they can purchase it. No, we are building something for a client, for people that are going to use this website. Now, of course, you can have your own touch, your own flavor that you'll discover as you go along. But in the beginning, find what the market wants and just give them that. This is how you're going to be able to make way more money.